Happy New Year and anniversary. It's been six years, you guys. Can you believe it? Today, I will be drinking a Peroni and I forgot to grab the beer opener, but hold on because the stuff room always provides. Where is it? Oh. Kangaroo balls, right from Australia. So we're drinking Italian beer and using an Australian kangaroo ball sack to open it. <laughs> this year's starting out great. Grab your drink. Let's get into it. I think it's gonna be an interesting ride today. There's a lot on the list. Hey guys, Chevy Rell here. Uh, like I said in the intro, it is New Year's Day. In a perfect world, I would have uh, had this recorded and edited so that it could go up today, but for those of you who are OGs, you know that the, the, this shit show is normal. It'll probably be out next week. <laughs> I do have my clipboard of notes though. The last episode, I was trying to read them off my phone and it was a disaster and I forgot a bunch of stuff. Anywho, this is episode 86. So I've done 86 episodes in six years. Uh, for those of you who are new here, we are in the stuff room. I talk about knitting and knitting type things, basically anything that deals with yarn and fiber and knitting and crocheting and all the other things. Many of you know the Cocktail Hour at the Coop Girls. They also do a podcast. Their family owns an alpaca farm. They are awesome and I get to call them my friends. Every year they do something called a new to you Mal. And that is at the beginning of the year, you try something new. You don't have to finish it, but you post it on Instagram and there are a bunch of people who donate prizes and there is one grand prize winner and then some of the prize donators will then pick their favorite and send out a prize as well. I will link them below so that you can uh, go check that out, look at some of the past new to use. I still don't know what I'm going to do. In the past, I have been a new to you fail, which not that it's a fail because the whole point is to try something new. And there have been many things that I've tried and decided that I didn't love. But that's what it's all about, trying something new, right? So I have not found mine yet, but I'm sure I will. I think instead of trying like a whole new craft, because let's just face it, at this point in the game, I've pretty much tried everything I've wanted to try. I have mentioned in the past Tunisian crochet is probably one of the things that only things that I haven't tried yet that I've sort of wanted to try and uh, I just don't have it in me right now. The stuff I'm making, I'm so excited about. And I I haven't found a pattern in Tunisian crochet that it's like, yes, I want that. Also, I haven't done any research on it, but whatever. You guys don't care. So my new to you thing is probably going to be a new technique. There is a different way of drop spindling that I want to try. So I think I might dabble in that. And I also want to, it's not new to me, but I would like to become a better long draw spinner. Um, I have some problems with my long drawing that I don't like my finished product. And I think I am going to, ah, I killed a gnat. I don't know why we have gnats, dude. It's winter. I'm a firm believer that there should not be bugs in winter. It's gross. But I have a jade plant in front of me. I think it likes that. Anyway, um, I am going to sort of delve into uh, what I need to change in my long draw technique to make it better and that I am considering new to me. Tell me what you're doing that's new for you. I don't really have a place to set my stuff in front of me. Do you guys have your uh, Halloween, Halloween? <laughs> 
I was going to say holiday, your holiday. I celebrate, we celebrate Christmas and I have taken all of those things down. And now the front of me, I've rearranged and realized that I have not left myself enough room. You guys don't care. Sorry. I am ready to rock and roll, baby. So even though it is the first day of 2024, which can I just tell you how freaking, I mean, I have never been, I don't believe in my life, so looking forward to a new year. 2023 sucked. I've never had so many people pass away in my like close knit family, let alone friends. I mean, it sucked out loud and I am so ready for 2024. But I do have to say, even though the holidays were rough, and they were, um, but we made it through, I ended the year out with some pretty rad advent calendars. I know, I said I wasn't going to do advent calendars. Well, you guys, I didn't do advent calendars. But I did have uh, a couple people send me advent calendars, and it just... I mean, I just love them so much. I really, really do. And oh my gosh, thank you so much for you guys who sent them. And I'm going to show them to, oh, there's a dog in a sweater. This is going to be a squirrel episode, totally. Oh shoot, have I been blown out that whole time? I feel like it's real. Do I need to put a sheet up? Eh, we might have to fight this. Sorry, guys, but it's... Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to put a sheet up. Da -da ding, 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 ding. Hot mess express. Oh, my God. I'm knocking everything over. Oh, I fell over. I fell over again. That's not me in a nutshell. This is me in a nutshell. How did I get into this bloody big nutshell? Okay, is that... It's still, it's still doing it. I might get to record today. That was way more effing around than I anticipated. And now, even though I feel like I've fixed the brightness, kind of, maybe, I feel like it's a bat cave in here. And now we are back to our regularly scheduled programming. I even forgot where I was. I was talking about Advents and how awesome people sent them to me and they really, really, really did make a shitty time of year pretty freaking cool. I opened these daily on my Instagram and saved them on like a highlighted story. So if you guys want to see any of these closer up or want to watch my stories, you can click through real fast opening them. Uh, you can get a better look. The first one I'm going to show you, my friend Dawn sent me, God lover. It is from Polka Dot Creek, and here's the card in it. It's the Griswold, the family vacation advent. All of them came in this bag, and you all loved it. For those of you watching me open it, it is a wireframe bag. It's really cool, and this comes from So Sha Whoa! I mean, <laughs> this comes from So Sharon. I have also linked everybody on um, those Instagram. I was going to say reels. I've linked everyone on the Instagram stories when I open them daily, but I will also link everyone in the description below. I am not going to go through the yarns one by one. I, you know, I'm not going to read them all, but they will all be linked and go look at the stories. So the reason that I said I'm not going to read them all is because every single one of these is a different dyer. This is a yarn shop in Alberta, Canada, and I, it was so much fun to meet all these new dyers. So let me just show you. Aren't they cool? My trusty curtain rod. Did you see anybody you knew? Looks like they're probably being blown out. But 
my original plan okay so do you guys know crystal from the yarn rebels she's also up there in alberta the yarn rebels is a group that you can join they get together irl one day if the universe works it out it would be so cool for me to make my way up there and meet everybody. Uh, Crystal is the co-founder, not the co-founder, Crystal is the founder of the Yarn Rebels. So when she saw that I was opening this advent, she knows a lot of these dyers. So I was getting little like messages like, oh, there are people, oh, they like cocktails, you totally love them. So it was just really neat to kind of know someone who knew them. But she asked me, what I wanted to do if I knew what I was going to make with them. And I was like, no, I hadn't planned for these at all, right? Like these were a surprise to me. Plus I have to start my blanket from my Pretty Twisted Advent from last year. I just have lots of starts, right? So she said, I think this pattern would be super cool. It's scrappy and it is the Voyage Sweater by Woolen Pine. Look at it. I immediately fell in love with it and I thought that it would be cool to have all the scrappiness right now there's a lot of variegated in this but I was like ah there's probably enough like that I can still put them together and not lose the definition well as I was opening the advents I was keeping them in the bag so I did not put them together until after I'd opened them all well, once I got them all opened, I was like, ah, I think it might be too busy to do this sweater. Like I didn't want it to get lost, but my next advent I think is gonna be perfect. So I'm still going to make the Voyager sweater with my next advent. Let me just show that to you again. And that's by Woolen Pine and it is a, and a dollar and 75 cent pattern. My next advent was from Gina at Skein Cocaine and I freaking love her. And full disclosure, this is the only advent that I did consider breaking my rule for. Um, I said I wasn't gonna do an advent. I don't remember if I've mentioned it on here, but Gina did a David Bowie advent and you guys know I love him mainly for um, full full disclosure I like his music but I'm not familiar with his music like some of you I fell in love with him when he played Jareth obviously on the labyrinth it's my absolute favorite and then because I loved him in that role I got to know him through interviews and things and I love him as a person um, and I do like his music, but I'm not like, I don't know the eclectic stuff. You know what I mean? I just feel like David Bowie was a really cool, cool human. It came with a bunch of candy that I haven't eaten yet. Mainly the candy canes. I have gotten into the chocolate. It looks like this when you open it. It has this cool thing. And I said that this was all songs. It's not all songs because as some of you know, David Bowie is also an actor and he's been in other movies that I have now added to my list. And this is what it looked like. I mean, I'll flip it, that's upside down. I was like, wait a minute, is it ripped? For those of you who followed along, you saw that Cole helped me open a couple of these and they are a puzzle. So if you take this out, oh my goodness. So I was really weird about getting them out of order and of course Cole wanted to play with them. So I told him that I, he loves puzzles and numbers and all of those things. He will stack these, he's gonna love it. I told him he could have it when I was finished opening it, which now I am. Fast forward, Gina has some solids in hers. I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but Gina said that she is not going to do one of these again. They are very labor intensive and I totally get it, but I am so glad that I got it. And look at it, look at it. It is phenomenal. 
and I think that it will see all the solids and then the variegated I can mix. I think it's gonna be absolutely perfect for that voyage sweater and which is going to be a thing, right? It's gonna be a thing. There's going to be swatching. It is a zero to uh, four inch positive ease sweater. You then steak it, you steak the arm. So it's gonna be, maybe that's my new to you, even though I would never make it there before the new to you mal is over, which I think is sometime early February but you steak the sleeves and then pick up. And I've never done that. I've only steaked, what did I steak? Oh, my, uh, so, so, oh God. You know, the sweater I wore to Rhinebeck. I wanna say side by side, that's not it. I have the worst memory. Step aside. My step aside I steaked. And that was just up the middle. There was no like steaking of armholes. And then, you know, anyway. That's a lot to say. That's what I'm going to do with this. I don't know what I am going to do with my Griswold Christmas one to be determined. I do want to show you the skein. Oh my God, you guys. I love this so freaking much. I mean, I gasped when I opened this. That was the full skein at the end. Also don't know what I'm going to do with that. Maybe some socks for me because I would rock those socks. Super psyched. Did I say everything about those things that I wanted to say? It was called the Canadian Christmas Countdown Calendar. That's what she called it. And I think she might've had a couple of them. Oh no, that is not all I wanted to say. I am going to sprinkle in some enabling here just because it works. Except what did I do with it? You guys, I'm losing my mind. Oh, right here it is. I couldn't think of what I did with it. And here, it lives with Hennifer. Which you guys, this emotional support chicken has brought me so much joy. And I love that all of you are making it. This whole thing with Johnny Bo, for those of you who know him, this whole hilarious thing ensued yesterday because Aquila made one in Instagram stories. So funny. Anyway, Lindsay from Linden Wool. I've talked about her before. The Sweater Weather video was at her house. Back when I went to the Sauters retreat, she was there. She's been in my knitting group that sort of disbanded a long, long time ago when COVID hit. She dyes yarn. However, I think she is dwindling that away. She also has a podcast. I will link her below. For those of you who don't like the chitter chatter, which I know when I first started, I said I wasn't going to chitter chatter and then I got to know you guys and it just, you know, natural progression. But Lindsay keeps it to the knitting. So if you wanna see uh, just knitting content and what she's making, she makes beautiful sweaters, lots of color work. She does awesome stuff. She is dwindling down her yarn dyeing business. I don't think that she's going to do it anymore. If she does, she's just going to dabble. Uh, she is the one who also gifted me some yarn back when I had all that teeth stuff for you. Oh, geez, I won't get into it. It's boring. I had teeth stuff. Lindsay sent me yarn to make me happy. It's the shawl I had on in my New Year's story yesterday. That is the I swear you guys, I'm a hot mess. I just found this because I had a couple questions from people as to who made it. Amber Shore, it's the Amber Shore pattern by Inese Sang or I, I, not, I think it's Inese Sang. It's one of my favorite shawls because her yarn is super soft, squishy, scrumptious awesomeness. So she said that she was marking down the yarn in her shop. I'll link her below. I had to grab some skeins. I grabbed these. This is Vernal, and like I said, I don't know how many will be left, but this is Vernal Equinox. This is Polaris, which is getting so blown. There we go. Polaris. This is Midnight. And this is second cup of coffee. 
and the second the second cup of coffee is what I am going to be using for the arms and bands of the Voyage sweater. I feel like I've said so much and have barely scratched the tip of the iceberg. I haven't even gotten into FOs yet. So a huge thank you to Gina Skane Cocaine for sending me the advent. She also has a YouTube. She will be linked below. And a most generous, awesome thank you to Dawn, who is Yarn is a Sport. I've talked about her before. Also has a podcast and will be linked below for sending me the uh, Canadian Christmas advent. You, you definitely gave me something to look forward to every day and it was just really awesome, so thank you. So FOs are going to go quick because uh, a lot of them are gone. Um, my first FO is, well, wait a minute. How do I wanna do this? I forgot I took a video before I gave, gave things, so uh, I'm gonna insert a little video here and hopefully I included everything in the video as to what they were. I think I did. I gave them to the gift recipients. They absolutely loved them, which of course made my heart happy. And I'll put that in here. Hey guys, Chef is from the past. I am literally unwrapping Christmas presents to show you these FOs. <laughs> I was just going to insert a picture of like them wearing them, but I have like a couple minutes, Dan isn't ready for us to leave to go to Christmas. So here we are. My first FO is my cowl that I'm forgetting what it's called, stand by. It is the LTYC super bulky cowl. It looks like this, this is Rasta. I have no idea what colorway it is. This is for my cousin, Jana. She walks the dogs at night a lot, and I think this will be really easy for her to just on. And I have my tags. I don't know if I've ever shown. I'm sure I did when I got them. And then on the back it says, made with love. And then my other FO is my Campancho for my mom. I wish I would have made this longer. I really was thinking it was going to block out my mom's little, so I feel like maybe it'll be good for her. She loves stuff up around her neck and you can wear it like this with the detail down your shoulder or you can flip it and put that in the front or the side or however you wanna wear it. If you wanna be edgy, you can put the points Isn't it cute? I still want one. Oh my gosh. Now, you can tell, remember I told you I had to order that extra skein off a of D-Stash? Did I tell you that? I had to order an extra skein off D-Stash. And it was different, but I don't care. It's Greenwich, not Greenwich. I was thinking, like when I hear Greenwich, I hear, I think Greenwich Village in New York. I wasn't even thinking that like how it was spelled or that there was a Greenwich in Canada. So that's what this is. I talked about the yarns. There's a little booger there where I had to like join yarn or something and I hate it and I've been picking at it and trying to fix it, but whatever, my eye goes right to it obviously. So I'll have to work on that. Do I wanna say anything else about this? Oh my God, it's glaring on camera. You can't see it that bad in real life. I, Ugh. My mom won't care, she loves me. Okay, gotta go. Then my last two finished O's have also been sent off to recipients. Uh, there is a gal that I worked with several years ago. Some of you may remember when I made these. Her daughter loves Coraline and she asked me, Coraline's a movie. She asked me uh, to make her daughter these gloves that Coraline wears, and I did. And sh her daughter wore the crap out of them, and uh, they fell apart, and she was so sad, and talked about it all the time. And Lori got a hold of me to make her another pair, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't wanna do it, but because 
her daughter loved them so much and talked about them and like was so sad that they fell apart. I knew that they were well loved and I knew that she um, was definitely knit worthy. So I did make her these gloves. I hate gloves, knitting fingers are no fun. The color changes I was absolutely not happy with. It was not my best work, uh, but I hope she loved them as much as she did the first pair. My next FO, I uh, made the Leany hat. Oh, first off, hold on. The Coraline gloves are a free pattern by Tika Bell. It'll be knit and I, it'll be knit, it'll be linked. And I knit those in Knit Pick Swish. It's a really nice yarn for, you know, peep for gifting. Um, and then the Lenny by Isabel Kramer, I knit for my cousin Eva, who goes to ESU. ESU. OSU. She is cute as a button. I knit it, of course, in OSU colors. That was also a free pattern. And that yarn was gifted to me by uh, my friend Hillary a very long time ago when I told her that uh, I would love some one day Volmise in my stash and she gifted me that skein. So I'd been saving it for, cause I'm that person, I'd been saving it for something special and it was just perfect for that. So those are my FOs, none of them are here. Told you it'd be quick. You know what that means. Whips. There's so many things I wanna show you and I feel like I'm not gonna have enough time. Not that I'm on a time limit, I just know that like you guys aren't all that into two hour episodes. My first whip is, and I think I've shown these before, I don't remember, they are the Slantways, Slantways The Mitten, and did I say who it is? The Mittening by Chrissy Lee, it's a free pattern. I am knitting these in Deep Stash Rowan Colorscape Chunky. It looks like this. And I can't remember the last time I showed you, but I did get one whole mitten done. I'm not in love. I'm not in love. They were going to be a Christmas present. I did not tell the individual they were getting them. I had to rip way back now and I'm worried that they're going to be too long for people because these fit my nail well I mean you can see my nail but I sort of have like man hands so the person I'm giving them to I don't know if they will be wonderful but whatever I maybe next year I was thinking I was thinking what the hell I was thinking of shoveling snow so I don't know, these are probably going to be hibernating and you won't see them again, but it is a whip and I wanted to uh, tell you what happened to them. My next whip, which the last time you saw it, this is in a bird leg bag, my mushrooms. I have not touched this in forever and I don't think that you guys have even seen it cast on. If I remember correctly on the last episode, I just told you that I was making it and that I was going to cast it on. At the beginning of November, Dan and I went down to Pigeon Forge and stayed uh, in a cabin for a couple days with the bows to celebrate their anniversary. It was wonderful. And Aquila and I, it was totally Johnny Bow's idea, was to have a vacation knit. So we chose the Blue Ridge Cowl by Laura Ayler, and it's a $6 pattern. And why don't I have a picture of it? I don't have a picture of it, it looks like this. And I got pretty far and I'm absolutely in freaking love with it. So it'll go like this. And then these are the Blue Ridge Mountains the mountains i love it i love it so much it's going to be amazing this is yarn dyed by johnny bow uh they told me the colorway and i forget what it was the blue yarn which is getting blown out 
is by Mindville Wool Company. It was a one-off, so you're probably not gonna get that. And then this is by Beehive Yarns, also gifted to me. I don't know why I'm shaking coffee. And I need to pick it back up, but I did all this work on it and then I was into Christmas knitting because I had, you know, quite a bit of it that I wanted to get done, uh, obviously before Christmas so that I could give gifts away. So this is mosaic knitting. It is an absolute joy to make. It is fun to knit. I like it a lot. I just needed to get some other things finished up so that will come back. Hopefully that'll be finished the next time you see me. Okay, next is spinning. You guys, this is this is so weird. Do you remember last year? You can kind of see them right there. I did a fiber advent on a quest for fiber. Her name's escaping me right now. I ordered a 3D um, print, a 3D printed Turkish spindle from her. I got her advent and then she sent me this fiber right here and I've been spinning it and she's like total MIA. She's gone like completely, like can't find her. She, like her YouTube channel's gone. Everything's gone. It's so weird. So I hope she's okay. She is in Canada, but I've been spinning her fiber. You have seen this before. I have started my second cop, cop turtle. So that's what that looks like. And here is my first one. She's a beast. <laughs> She's a total beast. I like, yeah, this is half of it. I was dropping her. One of you mentioned, you know, I said, I wonder how much I can fit on here. And one of you mentioned that it will start dropping, which it totally did. It started dropping. This is going to be way uneven, unbalanced, not unbalanced. It probably will be balanced, but it's not a consistent spin. Uh, there's, It's probably going to range. I'm going to, to chain ply it to keep the colors together, and it's probably going to alternate. Maybe I'm guessing between sport and worsted even, sport and DK. I, I don't know. We'll see. But... This took me, I don't even remember when I started this, but you know, spindle spinning for me is very much, and I think I said this on the last episode, uh, it's a meditative process for me. I really, really enjoy the process of it. And this is not something that I'm like, hurry up, get it done. This is something that just uh, makes my heart happy at certain times. And like, all I want to do is just spindle, uh, you know, spindle spin. So uh, this is a long term project. But I was pretty excited to get this mammoth beast off of it. So I can officially say I am over half done with the spin. Oh, and I've mentioned before this Turkish spindle is from did I do it again? I did upside down. Shepherd's Woodworking 2018. They have a website. They'll be linked. I see them at festivals. It's a beautiful spindle. I have multiple spindles. That is by far my favorite. I'm a Turkish spindle girl. I started out on a top whirl. I just love the Turkish. I find it very, very enjoyable. My next whip is in my chipette. From Fiber Hustle, Chip sews these. I mean, you guys, I get so much use out of this bag. These are socks for Dan, and my recipe is my standard recipe. I do switch it up. My standard recipe is two at a time because I don't want to have sockitis. Two at a time, uh, usually toe up. However, this time, even though I'm doing two at a time, I am doing top down because I am knitting the Procrastinatrix, Procrastinatrix top down sock, which is in Laura Neal's sock architecture book. Uh, she is 
also used to be, this is like the Bitter Knitters episode. She used to be in uh, the knitting group that I went to at the coffee shop years ago with Lindsay. Uh, and we were around when she made this book. I actually uh, have some, my name listed in here for knitting a sock and this is horrible but i don't remember uh what sock it was that i knit for her <laughs> but i sampled knit for the book i do pull this out every once in a while this is a really interesting book for different sock techniques she has lots of different toes and it's just a neat book if you check it out and this uh procrastinatrix that i'm knitting I've not obviously gotten to the heel yet, but it says that everything about this sock is entirely run of the mill and familiar, except the order in which it is made. So I am uh, really interested in what, what this pattern's about. The yarn that I am making it with is in the pretty twisted yarn colorway grab your stuff room. Teresa dyed this for me. It is a very special skein to me. And Dan picked it for his socks. And I said, okay, because for those of you who know Dan, he is extremely knit worthy. And he love, love, loves his socks. So this is the grab your stuff room colorway. I have my little Haribo, Haribo gummy bear that was gifted to me from across the pond. I think that this yarn looks like the mystery machine. For those of you who saw the Live at Five, Robin Yarnbirds Live at Five. Oh, announcement. I have to make that too. For those of you who are in the area and did not catch Robin's Live at Five on Instagram the other day, which will be a couple weeks after you've seen it. Uh, I do believe she saves those live at five, so you can go back and rewatch them if you'd like to. I will be at the nest. So the yarn birds is, Birdie is her truck, Robin owns it. I talk about her often, she's my friend. She lives near Columbus, Ohio, and I will be there knitting and hanging out that weekend. Uh, so she will have the nest open. It's not open all the time, only for like special event type stuff. And uh, I'm gonna go down and hang out. So come over and uh, knit with me, say hi, drink some wine. I'll actually be there. I think the 27th is the Saturday date, but I'll be there Friday night and uh, Saturday. Obviously, I'll go home Sunday. So uh, Dan, I think, is coming too. He's going to see if he can get out of work and it should be a good time. But I mentioned these on the Live at Five last weekend, and I was calling it something. Oh, I was going the Dream Machine. Is that what it's called? The Scooby-Doo van? And everyone's like, it's the Mystery Machine. Duh. Oh, 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 gosh. I'm forgetting all the things. Can you tell I got a lot of sleep last night? I am like, zing. On the last episode, I talked to you about changing my needle size. I went to a one because... I was not liking the fabric that I was getting from the size two needles. Many, many, many of you said that I should try the one and a half because I tried the ones and it was too tight and very not enjoyable to knit. I got the one and a halves. Now, Dan, the engineer, for those of you engineers out there watching, always said our entire relationship that when you're trying to work something out, that you're trying to figure out how to make it better or the best, you know, like how to fix it, you only change one thing at a time because then you'll know if that's the thing that was the problem. So really, I should have just went to a one and a half needle, but I have been watching a new to me podcast. Okay, I got interrupted. Sorry. Where was I? There's a new to me podcast called Swatch This Space. Her name's Carol. She's only on, I don't know, like four or five episodes, something like that. She's also in Alberta. It's the Alberta Canada 
Bitter Knitters episode. I'm like, it's so weird. Okay, she's also in Alberta. And I believe her daughter has a horse rescue and maybe she helps. I can't remember. They have a horse rescue called Five Winds Ranch Rescue and Rehab or Rehabilitation, I think. I'll link it. But she starts out every episode introducing you to uh, one of the horses on the ranch and kind of telling you a little about them. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I grew up on a horse farm. Horses are very, very dear to my heart. Uh, my grandpa loved his horses. And by the time I came around, because I was on the tail end of it, uh, we only had two. And one was my sister's saddle horse. And then the other was my horse, Honeybee. I'll put a picture here. Honeybee was a buggy horse. And uh, her papers say Honeybee Rel. Rel is my middle name because she was born only a couple weeks after I was. So she has been my horse since I was a baby. And of course, you know, she passed many years ago. Uh, sorry, it still makes me cry when I think about her. She was, there's something about horses that are is just different. For those of you who uh, have ever been close to a horse, you know, that, that bond is just, it's there, man. And she helped me through some really, really hard times. So um, I love that Carol starts out the episode with rescue horses. Uh, later on, we also went on to rescue horses. Uh, people would ask my dad, sorry, if you guys don't care about this, you can like click forward 10 seconds or whatever. People would often ask my dad what we do with our horses and my dad just called them living art. They didn't do anything. They made us happy. That was obviously an endorsement for you to go check Carol out, but the whole reason that I'm mentioning her is because uh, on one of her episodes, she was talking about collage square needles and how much better they are for your hands because uh, they're kind of like er er ergonomic, erg ergonomic, ergonomic, ergonomic. Let's, let's have another drink, shall we? Something about the square needles are very uh, good for your hands. I have never knit with them. I was buying these one and a half needles and I thought I want to try the squares too. So I actually changed two things instead of one. I know cringe, but so far they are working out famously. The fabric is awesome. I have not checked the gauge. Oh, I'm, I'm getting 10 stitches per inch. Wasn't that what I was getting before? They're just so much nicer to knit with and it seems like, uh, like I just like them a lot. Anyway, I mentioned the collage needles. Sorry guys, this isn't normal. I'm like zinging today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned the collage needles. I looked all over for them. There are some people who carry them in the United States. They are a Canadian based brand. I could not find them anywhere near me. So I ended up, I researched tons of stuff and I got the Knitter's Pride Cubics, Nova Cubics. And I absolutely love them. You can't really barely even tell they're square. And to, to be honest with you, I don't know why I'm showing that to you, you can't see it. To be honest with you, I, don't, I can't even tell that they're square when I'm holding them. It's just a little bit and there's something about them that it kind of makes me want a whole bunch more of them. <laughs> so anywho, enough about that. My last whip that I have actually worked on, you guys, is my cal. This is the Deep Stash Cal. I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing about it because it takes me forever to do things. I am hosting a very, very loose cal, which should have been a mal, but I called it a cal. It is a mal. You can do anything. And it is something that is your deepest stash yarn that you bought 
for a specific product that product project that you just haven't made yet and you grab it and you start it and you post it on Instagram a picture of it you don't have to finish it it's hashtag dscal23 like I said it's a mal you can it can be anything crafty fibery related. Mine was the across the pond shawl. I am using that hashtag to draw prizes. I am going to, I haven't drawn in a while, like I'm doing it as I go, uh, little by little throughout the cow as a surprise. You will get a message from me in your Instagram DMs, period. You will hear no other way that you will win. Uh, I just do a random number generator and pick from the pictures that come up. I am making the Across the Pond Shawl by Knitting Expat. It's a $6.48 pattern. I am also a paper pattern person, you guys. This is what my paper patterns look like, let me show you. Especially this one because I've had it forever. I've spilled coffee on it. I have, yeah, this is the shawl. I've gotten quite a bit of progress on it since you've last seen it. At least I feel like I do. And it is looking, this blows out every time. It is looking like this. I love that kind of little honeycomb gathered and I'm down into, sorry, we're gonna fight the light here for a minute. I'm down into the lace. This never does the color justice. It's just, whoops, it's just not ever gonna look right on camera. I'll try to get okay pictures of it at some point. Funny story, there is a 16 row repeat of the lace. And I was so excited because I finished the, the lace repeats the other day and I thought that I was like done. I wasn't even looking at this and I read the pattern. You repeated another one and a half times. <laughs> and I was like, aw, aw, aw. <laughs> so this is still a work in progress, which is good for you because that means that I'm gonna keep on drawing for prizes. Those of you who win today will have already been notified uh, by the time you see this. The yarn that I am using is Honey Girl Farms, and this is the Ball with the Goblin King and uh, Goldenrod? Gold Dust. I was close. And that's it for my whips. That's, that's, that's it. I have not, obviously I have things. My Yarmulata, haven't touched it, need to, want to, just been, you know, busy with the holidays and whatnot. How was your guys' new year? I was in bed at 12.15 and falling asleep on the couch before that. I know, riveting, right? So now I'm gonna show you some fun things that I have been uh, I've gotten enabling that I've purchased myself. I've gotten a lot of happy mail, which are also gifts from people that I just call it happy mail because that's what we call it. I don't know. I wanted to show you a couple things that Dan got me for Christmas, but let's see how this goes because I don't know time-wise this is already ridiculous and I haven't even started the second half of the podcast. So, and... Potty break. I'm going to go get another beer. Stand by. Okay. I got my uh, melty, Melted Shrug, which is a Suzanne Sommer pattern. You guys have probably seen it. If you watched for a minute, I absolutely love it. I was chilly. I have switched to Light Sky Citrus Wheat Blue Moon. I've shown this before. It's my favorite drinkable beer. Also, that being said... I know that I do not have to explain myself, but I want to. I received a comment from someone, which is totally fine. I totally understand. I totally get it. Don't go at anyone. Like, it was fine. But they asked me if I ever considered getting help for my drinking because I drink in every episode. And 
For those of you who are new here and are not an OG and kind of don't know the gig, I love a cocktail. I am a very social drinker. I don't have a problem. I drink when I go out with my friends and I consider podcasting hanging out with my friends. So yes, you will always see me have a cocktail. It is my gig. No, I don't have an alcohol problem. I promise. I promise. <laughs> like, I, I just wanted to throw that out there for the new viewers. Uh, having a cocktail with you guys is part of the gig of the stuff room. It's just what I do. So that being said, cheers. Nobody needs to worry about me. Okay, I need to move all my stuff so that it's within reach of me. My first enabling is from Sinful Yarns. Now, not to bring up old shit, but Sinful Yarns is one of the vendors that was in all the malarkey of the Woolen Folk fiasco back in October. Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready had a, a thing that was absolutely wonderful and it was a hashtag to buy things from those vendors that were like, you know, done dirty. I guess we'll say done dirty. And for Christmas presents and things. And then they had a hashtag gifts and folk 2023. I purchased it for me to then make something to gift to other people. And then I also uh, bought something for me. So I got, and they are so soft, you guys. Hold on, let me put it over here. It's still getting blown out, but you get it. Oh my God, you guys, the name, there. The name of this colorway could not be more perfect. It's called Full Moon. Man, it's spectacular. I mean, it looks, it makes me so happy. And then it had the mini and this is Black Sapphire. I mean, I will make this as a gift. It just won't be for Christmas. Then the thing I got for myself is this super cute 3D printed keychain. Isn't it cute? Look. <laughs> okay, Dan, you guys, Dan, Got a 3D printer. For those of you who follow Andy, the Naughty Nitrous, she makes all this cool stuff on a 3D printer. This is the first I'd seen this and I love it. So now I'm on the hunt to uh, figure out things for Dan to make me like this on the 3D printer because I think it's hilarious. That's enabling. Then back, back to when we were in Pigeon Forge with the bow. Well, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's this touristy area down in uh, Tennessee that is, I mean, it's gorgeous down there. You know, we stayed in a cabin in the mountains. Uh, we did attempt to drive up to the top of one of the mountains and uh, check out the view. <laughs> that was our view. <laughs> but like Dan said, there are tons of pictures of the view that everybody has. How many times do people go up in the mountains and see that? I mean, the fog was so dense and it was just super cool. Even, even with the fog, it was awesome. Um, we pulled off into this little like rocky area and kind of hiked up. We took some cool pictures. I'll put those at the end. I'll do like a little picture thing that's been going on in my world, maybe a little from Christmas and stuff. I don't know. At the end, we had some really fun photo shoots. Uh, on our shenanigans up and down the mountain. And in Pigeon, I get Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg mixed up. And now I can't remember. Oh, wait, it's right here in front of me. Gatlinburg. Smoky Mountain Spinnery is where we went. Quill has talked about them uh, multiple times in her years because they keep, they go there. They've been there more than just this time. And while I was there, I got this mug. 
Isn't it cute? I love it. I have a thing for any hand-thrown pottery. I just love it. I just love it. I also have a very small collection of uh, sheepy mugs. I've said before a lot of times when I go to fiber festivals, if I don't need yarn, I will grab a sheepy mug rather than adding to my already what I feel is overwhelming stash, which it isn't really compared to most people's, but I added a mug to my collection. I tend to shop for yarn for specific projects. So if I go someplace and I don't have something specific, I usually get a non-yarny yarny item. I mean, it has sheep on it, yeah? So that moves us into Happy Mail slash gifts. Where do I wanna go first? The bows always outdo themselves. I feel so inadequate to them because they are some of the coolest people that I know on this planet. So they show up to the party with gifts that I of course absolutely love. They had already been down there before we got there for a few days. So they'd already been shopping and picked up a couple things that they knew I would like because you know, they're awesome. This is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park colorway by Knitted Wit. And I mean, this could not be more me. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's gonna marinate for a little bit. Can't decide what I wanna do with it, but it makes me so happy. It's like very happy. Then when your friends know you, right? When your friends know you, I love him. Babysitter for hire. Yes, I love it so much. I love it. They got me that t-shirt. And then Quill and Hazel. Uh, Quill got, oh, it's a loom. I'll put it here. I'm going to have to ask her. It's escaping me. I actually threw around doing this as a new to me because these are going to make awesome gifts. And then I decided that I did not need to spend more money on another, like I gotta get some stuff done. So I decided against it, but Quill made them for me and Hazel picked out these colors. Hazel is her daughter, picked out these colors and she also made me this one. They are awesome, I love them. So maybe in the future I will be getting one of those looms I know that I would absolutely love it. Look, and there's even a little hangy thing. I know that I would absolutely love to do it. Maybe that'll be my gifting next year, I don't know. But I just love them. So that was part of it. And then, you guys, this was in our room for me from Johnny Bo. Look at it, look at it. So let me bring it back here. There's these little doors that open like this. And I have, you can't tell, see, but I have my circular needle cables in here. And I have my stitch holders, because I have quite a few of them. I have some stitch markers and things in there. And then you do this, shut up. I have my cranked sock tubes over here. I have my yarn condoms because I also have a lot of those in here. And then I have little leftover minis in here. It makes me so happy. So that was a gift from Johnny Bo. Didn't he do a good job? Oh my gosh. So freaking cool. Then I posted this on my Instagram because I knew that I, you know me, I don't record like on a regular basis because, you know, life happens. But I try to put everything on my Instagram like as it's happening, this kind of stuff so that you guys can get it too. Two of my all-time favorite people, Teresa from Pretty Twisted Yarns and Katie from the Naughty Knitting Sacks came out with the Naughty Collection and they sent me one because they know that I'm naughty. I am pretty naughty. 
So this was their Naughty collection. I also love this bag closure. I love it, I love it, I love it. This was obviously for Christmas, so I'm sorry you can't get this anymore, but keep an eye out for their stuff because both of those ladies, women, ladies, badass bitches are amazing. So we have some little snow globes and then you open it up and in it is this magical goodness. Look at that. It's called the Naughty List. Oh, so cool. I think this would make a really cool stocking. Then there were these guys, and you know what, I apologize. I don't remember if these have a, I don't know if you can get these, but they're those needle stoppers. <laughs> oh, I love them. Okay, so then, you know, the whole thing with naughty knitting sacks, right? Remember fornicating skeletons? Look at what naughty is on the inside of this. And it's reversible. So you can decide whether you want to wear your naughty on the outside or the inside. But here's the naughty. <laughs> it goes with the gingerbread men. I just love them. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, I'm going to be styling next season with my naughty knitting sack and my and my bitchy gingerbread men. I'll obviously link both of them below, so go check out their stuff, see what kind of shenanigans they're up to currently. I know Teresa, I think, does something for Valentine's. I'm sure Katie has Valentine's type stuff, I'm sure. Then Brenda from Knitter's Elegance sent me this. These will be a giveaway. I want to keep them, but I can't keep everything, you know? Like, I need to share the wealth. These are her needle size markers. Let me show them to you as I am reading her awesome letter. Okay, she says, these are my needle size markers. They are designed to be clipped to your work shortly after you cast on. That way, if you take the needles or hook for a different project, you will always know what size needle when you go back to your whip. The set of 10 markers, one through 10 for US sizes, that's these purple guys right here, and the crochet hooks, which are called rainbow shift, is B through L. If requested, I can leave some sizes out and put other sizes in. For instance, if you want metric needle sizes, uh, there would be others in the set. So she is also in Alberta, Canada. You guys, shout out to Alberta. You are representing this episode. I am going to give these beauties away. How should we do it? Let me think. God, they're so pretty. Okay, to enter, we're gonna go with, in the comments below, if you wanna enter for these, put either knit happy or crochet happy. Both of those words have to be together. Knit happy, crochet happy, depending on which you are, a knitter or a crocheter. I'll draw a name on the next thing. Knit happy, crochet happy. In the meantime, if you don't wanna wait, cause you know me and my recording schedule, that is Brenda at Knitter's Elegance and she'll be linked below. Last, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the Christmas cards. I, not that I got like a bazillion of them, but I got a handful of Christmas cards from people I know, people I don't. Uh, and it just, you know, makes me super happy, especially today, because, you know, back in the day, my boss talks about this a lot. Back in the day, everybody sent Christmas cards, you know, everybody sent them. And now I feel like stamps are so flippin' expensive that a lot of people don't. So I really, really appreciate uh, anyone who sends out Christmas cards. That is awesome. I too used to send out Christmas cards and I don't 
really anymore. I do want to show you these super cute little stitch markers that Elizabeth sent in her card because they are so my vibe. And honest, these are some of my favorites. My friend Angie made me some uh, some years ago and I love using them because they're so cute and they're light. I say stitch markers, they're progress keepers. I'm trying to put them on my nails and it's not working. So I'm gonna do this. There's a little witch and a little beaded skeleton and a little black widow. I love those. They're made of beads. They're so light, fun. I just like them. And then I have to brag on my friend Carrie. Uh, she does the Creative Obsession podcast and her cards are always top notch because she makes them and look how cute they are this year. That's sewn on there. I mean, she quilts, she does all the things, she ice dyes. I mean, she's amazing and I love her face. I just had to show you guys how cute that card was. I hope everyone had a good holiday. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I am going to show you just a couple things that I received for Christmas because I think they're kind of fun and uh, one that's pretty heartfelt. So Mama Jean got me this, <laughs> this towel, which is funny because if you're new here, I work at a funeral home. She also got me these funny post-it notes that I have not opened yet. Also, also, if you are easily offended, you probably don't watch me anyway, but you know. And then this pen said fresh out of box. <laughs> then Dan, funny Dan. Again, like if you're offended, I can't believe that you're still here. But if you're soft at all, you're probably really not going to like this. <laughs> it's just a picture book. It's just a picture book of all things in, in uh, our world that sort of look like dicks. Lots of mushrooms, obviously. And big, big rocks. You guys, I have to show you. This will probably get me. Oh no, I, I can't show it. I can't show it. I mean, there's one, there's one plant that I'm not kidding you. It looks like a legit penis. I'm not kidding. Dan also got me this and it's totally because Quill had one and I wanted one and I asked her where she got it. And forever ago, I sent it to Dan and said, I want this. And he remembered, I'd forgotten about it. It's a tarot card, the collector. And look, I collect things in the stuff room. So it's a hoodie. I love it. And then my big gift from Dan, this is not everybody's jam. So like, don't go look up this channel on YouTube and then come at me because you think that it's like deplorable. But there is this photographer named Mark Leda. I'm not gonna tell his story. You go do your research if you want, but he interviews these people that he takes portraits of and he has YouTube videos on them. And a lot of the stories are really hard to hear and you won't like them, but as a psychology major and a lover of the human experience, I absolutely love them. And his channel's called Soft White Underbelly and he put out a book. Like it is the only thing that I wanted. And Dan got me an autographed copy. I mean, I don't want to start. I mean, I've thumbed through it, but I haven't sat down with it um, with any time because I don't want it to be over. Isn't that weird? I want to go slow and cherish it. You know what I mean? That was my big present and I absolutely love it. Uh, Dan and I typically don't do presents, but... Um, that one was was pretty dang cool. Just a couple last things. This one is probably the most heartfelt gift I received and I'm gonna like do this really fast so that I don't cry. But Dan's stepdad died 
uh, at the end of August and he was an amazing, amazing human and just a very special person to me. Dan and I have been together for 17 years. He was like my dad. As many of you know, I lost my dad in June and then I lost a second dad basically in August and it sucked really bad. And Dan's mom got all of us presents that we opened together, even though we weren't supposed to do presents, but you'll get it. And it was these. Uh, this is Dean's shirt. We all got one in the pocket is a chapstick because he always, always had a, a chapstick, always. And then there is a patch on the back that says, this is a shirt that I used to wear, hold it tight and I'll be there. And I do and I love it. And I'm gonna keep going so I don't cry because it was super awesome. And then at that Christmas, we did a gift exchange and I got this mug, the dark crystal, isn't it cool? I love the dark crystal, like I think it's awesome. It's not labyrinth, labyrinth is, you know, like labyrinth labyrinth is big deal for me so i don't have the love for the dark crystal that i have for the labyrinth even though i like it i'm also going to give this away because i know that there are people out there who love the dark crystal as much as i love the labyrinth and i feel like this needs to live in somebody's house who would like appreciate it the same way i do labyrinth stuff now I, of course, have not thought this through and don't really know how to do this. Let me think. Because I want to, I want to prove that you are a diehard dark crystal enthusiast, right? So in the comments, just put dark crystal and then share one of your favorite parts of it. And I will draw a winner for this as well. That is it, you guys. Holy cow. It was a long one. Thanks for staying. It has been a really, really, really crappy last year. And I am so looking forward to 2024 being better than 2023. So that's my hope and dream for the year. I hope that you guys also have an amazing year thanks so much for sticking with me especially if you're here right now holy bejesus um and you know six years of this can you believe it it has changed you know a lot through the six years and thanks for sticking with me thanks for being new if you're new here and uh yeah i'll catch you on the flip side later